Plato's parable of the cave, written in the 4th century BC, is to this day a powerful portrayal of how philosophy works. The speaker is Plato's teacher, Socrates. And now, let me describe the human situation in a parable about ignorance and learning. Imagine there are men living at the bottom of an underground cave whose entrance is a long passageway that rises up through the ground to the light outside. Their heads are held by chains so that they must sit facing the back wall of the cave and cannot turn their heads to look up through the entrance behind them. At some distance behind them, up near the entrance to the cave, a fire is burning and objects pass in front of the fire so that they cast their shadows on the back wall where the prisoners see the moving shadows projected as if on a screen. And the person with whom Socrates is speaking, Glaucon, says, those are very strange prisoners, Socrates. And Socrates gives an answer that uh, is just electrifying. He says, well, they're like us. And you feel offended. You say, I'm not like that. In what sense is my condition like that? Well, Plato isn't saying we're necessarily stuck being like the prisoners in the cave. He's saying the state we're in can start out being like that of the prisoners in the cave, but we can do better. Now imagine the prisoners were able to talk with each other. And suppose their voices echoed off the wall so that the voices seemed to be coming from their own shadows then wouldn't they talk and refer to these shadows as if the shadows were real? For the prisoners, reality would consist of nothing but the shadows. Now, the obvious thing to think of if you're explaining this to a modern audience, of course, is TV. Now, it's not that there's anything wrong with watching TV, but there is something going wrong if you think that TV shows you the way things really are. And that's what the cave is about. Uh, the chains are customary ways of thinking about the world and thinking about our situation. It's what we've accepted from uh, our parents, accepted from the culture around us, from television, from the movies, from the novels that we read. All these assumptions we have about what the world is like. But next imagine that one of the prisoners was freed from his chains. Suppose he was suddenly forced to stand up and turn around toward the entrance of the cave and then forced to walk up toward the burning fire. Plato thinks most people grow up and they're quite happy with the views they've acquired about things, and they don't like being made to think about them. But someday somebody makes them think about them, and this is turning round. The movement would be painful, and the glare from the fire would blind him so that he would not see clearly the real objects whose shadows he used to watch. What would he think if someone explained that everything he had seen before was an illusion and that now he was nearer to reality and that his vision was actually clearer? His eyes would hurt and the pain would make him turn away and try to escape back to things he could see more easily, convinced that they really were more real than the new things he was being shown. What that is, is coming to see that a lot of your opinions are secondhand and picked up and in some sense, not really your opinions at all. And this is painful, having to think about why you think about your beliefs, the sources of your beliefs. You, you realize, well, I only think that because that's what I was taught at school, or my parents brought me up to think that, or something like that. But suppose that once more, someone takes him and drags him up the steep and rugged ascent from the cave and forces him out into the full light of the sun. Won't he suffer greatly and be furious at being dragged upward? As he approaches the light, his eyes will be dazzled, and he won't be able to see any of that world we ourselves call reality. This is Plato's way of showing us that sort of going from being in the dark to being able to see is not an easy process. It's not an immediate process. Little by little, he will have to get used to looking at the upper world, at first he will see shadows on the ground best, next perhaps the reflections of men and other objects in water, and then maybe the objects themselves. After this he would find it easier to gaze at the light of the moon and the stars in the night sky than to look at the daylight sun and its light. Last of all, 
he will be able to look at the sun and contemplate its nature, not as it appears reflected in water, but as it is in itself in its own domain. What for him is crucial about coming to have knowledge and not just any old beliefs about something is that you've thought about it for yourself, that you don't accept something on other people's authority or because it seems obvious or because you can just see it or something like that, but because you have reflected about it and scrutinized it in the most rigorous possible philosophical way. Finally, Imagine that the released prisoner was taken from the light and brought back into the cave to his old seat. His eyes would be full of darkness. Now he would have to compete in discerning the shadows with the prisoners who had never left the cave while his own eyes were still dim. Wouldn't he appear ridiculous? Men would say of him that he had gone up and had come back down with his eyesight ruined and that it was better not even to think of ascending. Well, somebody who's been out of the cave and goes down into the cave finds that his way of looking at the world is radically at odds with that of most people. It's not just that he comes to different conclusions, but he thinks about things differently. And people don't like this. They think that this guy's a lunatic. They think he's, he's crazy. He's talking about stuff the likes of which none of us have ever experienced. So whatever this little trip was that he took, it's ruined his mind. It's made him an idiot. And so they, they, they scorn him. So philosophy is both very compelling and very hard. And so it, it isn't presented as something that's all enjoyable or giving you a, a happy time. It's something that once you've started, you have to do because it is, in its way, compelling. You can't go back to the lower stage because it no longer satisfies you.